All right, let's talk Derek Stingley for a second. The guy who was drafted number three overall, uh, and it's never great when you're drafted number three overall, and the guy who was drafted number four overall plays the same position as you and wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. It's going to make you look bad in comparison. But listen, it's not Stingley's fault he was drafted above Sauce Gardner. Uh, you know, yes, Sauce Gardner had an amazing rookie year, but still, there are plenty of things that, uh, you know, Stingley was certainly a great prospect coming out of college, and plenty of people did have Stingley as a higher prospect. So let's talk about kind of what went right and what went wrong for Stingley. You know, if you're a fan of PFF grades, for example, his PFF grades weren't spectacular. As a rookie, they were actually pretty poor. But if you look at the game-by-game -game breakdown, it's a lot more interesting. So here it is. These are the, the 10 games that he played as a rookie. And you see, if you look all the way over to the right, the coverage, which let's be honest, that's what we're paying the most attention to. It was pretty much mediocre or slightly below mediocre in every single game, except for one, that week two game against Denver, where it was a 29 grade. So that was terrible. Other than that, though, he was pretty, again, fine for a rookie quarterback, cornerback coming in and playing consistently mediocre, I think would be a, a positive. Again, the Sauce Gardner thing never happens. That's an anomaly, and you shouldn't try to look at that and say, oh, well, that means that Stingley has been bad because he hasn't been, uh, you know, one of the best in his position as a rookie. That basically never happens, so I wouldn't hold it against Stingley. Uh, let's just focus on him as his own player. So let's start off with this play, and what you're going to see on the screen is is that's where he is, and that's the route he's covering. This is Cortland Sutton's route. We're talking about that Week 2 game against Denver, and to be honest— I think that he just struggled at trying to cover uh, Cortland Sutton, you know, big receiver who he's probably just not used to covering. Stingley's not small. He's six feet tall. You, you know, that, that's pretty good size for a corner. But still, playing a 6'4 guy who can move as well as a lot of, you know, uh, 5'10 guys, that's definitely a little bit surprising and maybe it's just something that, you know, uh, Stingley wasn't used to. Watch how on this play. I'm going to pause it at a certain point. So right here, you see that, uh, you know, for Stingley, he's making sure that he plays the receiver and he's he has his hips tor turned towards the sidelines. So if his hips are turned towards the sideline, what's a potential area where things could go very wrong? A way things could go wrong is if Sutton then cuts towards the middle of the field, right? Because then Stingley has to turn around. So this is where I think Sutton is going to kind of give Singley a little bit of a lesson in what it's like to being in the, in the NFL because he's going to do something very subtle here. Watch him slightly move to the inside, but then he cuts right when he gets uh, Stingley to start to move. So basically, he got Stingley to panic, and the second he panicked, that's when Sutton cut, was able to get open and able to pick up some yards right there. Really good stuff from Sutton. And again, these are kind of the rookie mistakes you sometimes just have to make in the NFL if you're a corner. And to me, that's what happened with Stingley is he just he made some rookie mistakes out there. He did. Again, going over to something like this, where this is a, a red zone situation, and this is just a pure one-on-one -on -one matchup. Cortland Sutton, again, big receiver, very good in these situations at the goal line fade. That's definitely something that they're going to look towards. And as you see, this is just a throw and catch by Russell Wilson, and Stingley is uh, unable to make the deflection there. Sutton gets the touchdown instead. So, again, really, the reality is the main takeaway, the main negative you have with Stingley's uh, tape last year really is that he struggled against Cortland Sutton, and he did. I thought that that was fair, but I think if you're willing to kind of accept that as a welcome to the NFL moment in your second ever NFL game, your your takeaway with what Stingley was able to do the rest of the year, you'll probably feel a lot better about. Like something like this, for example. So this is going to be a cover two zone, which that's another thing I should mention is for whatever reason in that week two matchup, they didn't play a lot of cover two. They played a lot of like, uh, you know, they let him be an outside corner a lot, whereas later on in the season, they went back to the cover two zone that they typically play and that I thought they drafted him to play is he, they thought he would be that kind of player and he really I thought did a lot better in that role where here's an example so right when this play begins you're going to see him really I mean at this point there's a defense a wide receiver who's trying to get towards the sidelines so what do you do well there's kind of there's an expression when it comes to corners which is use the sideline as another defender and one thing you can even do in this situation is you know get the guy to step out watch him kind of push the receiver out of bounds and listen I think you could argue that that was a push out and that would mean that the receiver could get back in bounds and you know as long as he reestablishes is okay cuz the you know the quarterback at that moment was not outside the pocket so although it was very close so you could certainly argue that maybe this is now leaving a guy wide open however 
what quarterback is going to see that and realistically think, oh, no, he stepped out, but that was a push out, so I'm not going to make that throw. Maybe you'll do it in a desperation situation, but the reality is I think that you know you could even argue that the receiver initiated a contact, which means that uh, Stingley didn't push him out. Instead, Stingley is able to run up and he is able to, uh, you know, force fields basically out of bounds. Didn't exactly, uh, you know, do a great job at making the tackle there. Kind of, you know, fell for a pump fake a little bit or just, you know, aware of potential throw. Listen, you could argue on either side of the coin there. But the way I view that play is that Stingley successfully did what he was trying to accomplish. And that's kind of how I evaluate players in the NFL did you do what you were trying to accomplish? And in my opinion, Stingley did on that play, uh, which is what he did a lot more consistently in the NFL the following weeks after he had that bad game against Cortland Sutton. And also just in more like traditional ways, uh, which, you know, pro- people will probably be more uh, interested in seeing stuff like this, where it's again, zone coverage, but obviously you notice this is a very different type of zone coverage. It's basically a, uh, you know, it's an end of game scenario. So, okay, you're playing prevent defense, but still watch what happens. So we're going to get to this point and you're going to see at a certain point that for Stingley, uh, you know, there's a receiver who could get open in that gap in coverage who, you know, why not make this throw? It's desperation time. See if you can make something happen. But for Stingley, this is an opportunity to show what he's capable of. As you see, that's exactly what Stingley is going to be able to do. He reaches over, he knocks the ball away. So you did see the flashes with Stingley. You saw what he was capable of doing when he was at his best, and that's definitely something that is going to get Texans fans excited. It would get me excited if I was a Texans fan, the fact that he is capable of doing those types of things. Now, uh, do you want to see it more consistently? Sure, because again... Even if you take out the bad Cortland Sutton game, okay, now his numbers aren't nearly as tough, but they're still not necessarily good either. It's kind of the, you know, I think a good counter argument if you're someone who is a Stingley hater, uh, which I don't know if there are Derek Stingley haters, but if there are, that's something that you would, uh, you know, say is that, well, uh, you know, Sure, that's fine that maybe he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't necessarily good either. I mean, he made some solid plays, but definitely had his issues later on in the season as well. And that's fair. I mean, again, the guy, if you look at PFF grades, was 111th out of 118 total players. Uh, But if you were to look at, you know, outside of that one game, he'd probably be somewhere around like 60 or 70. So kind of like a, a below average number two corner, which again, For rookie corners, it just takes time to develop. It takes you some time to figure out how the NFL game works. And to me, I wouldn't be overly concerned with Stingley's disappointing performance. It was a disappointing performance, but I wouldn't be overly concerned about it. But that's just kind of my opinion on all of that. What's your opinion on all of that? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.